Hi, I'm just going to talk a little bit about iridescent mediums that I use with my brush show. One or two people have asked um, about what I use. These ones are made by Colourcraft. You can get quite a few different colours. I've just got those these three. This is a new one I've just bought this morning, so I'm looking forward to using that. It's um, I don't know if you can see there, it's a lovely blue. Um, and the thing with these is it, they will settle to the bottom, so you need to give them a really good shake before you use them. That's a lovely blue, but I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it has got a little shimmer in it. So there's the blue, um, this copper one, you might have seen me using that one in the tree that I did, um, because it gave it a lovely autumn, autumny look with that coppery colour. So I use, I use that. And then this one, is you can see I've used a lot, it's nearly empty, um, is a silver. It doesn't look silver in there, but when you spray it on it's a silver. And I like that one because you can put it over the top of your work very gently and the colours still come through. With these coloured ones you've got to be, of course, be very careful. You're not covering over the work you've already done with a different colour. So uh, you've got to plan it into your work. Um, I'm going to, looking forward to using this blue one. I think it'd be nice to go over the top with some brush on that. In fact, we'll perhaps just give that a try. So I've got the blue shimmer there. Um, and I'll just spray a bit of water on it to wet it. This is just an old um, large pad. Um, and this is another new colour I've just recently bought. The turquoise. And if you look in the turquoise, you can see it's um, actually got quite a lot of dark colours in there. So you need to make sure you get a few of everything to get the older colours. But yeah, that's going to look nice on top of that blue shimmer. So even when you've worked on top of the shimmer, the, the shine, the light will pick up the shine um, of your finished painting. Okay, so another thing that I use quite a bit of is this iridescent one from Windsor & Newton. Um, so it just says iridescent um, medium and it can be used for all sorts of things. So I don't just use this with brush oil, you can use it with ink, you can use it with watercolours, anything you fancy. Um, Likewise, I use the Colourcraft ones with um, some of the water-soluble oil paints and that looked quite nice. Just very gently, just mixed it in a tiny bit just to catch the light uh, very subtly. This one, um, it's very thick actually, sometimes I use it neat, but quite often I'll mix it with some water. So I'll get a pipette with, and pop some water, you can see that pipette's still got some left in from last time actually. And then I will just get a little bit out and pop it in and mix it up because you can see there that it's very uh, thick. So if you mix it with some water, you don't, you're not covering your paper just the same and your colours from underneath can come through. So either you can put it underneath your work or again on top of your work or as I do, a bit of both. Um, so yeah, you can just squirt it around with that. Um, use a bit of watercolour paper actually so if you just put some squirts on sorry it's got a little bit of the blue in there you can see and, and sometimes what I'll do is while it's still nice and thick and drying like that is pop some of the brush oil into it leave it overnight see what happens let it sink down or, or you can perhaps just drag it around a little bit and you know move it with your, your spatula anything like that and then leave it to settle. Some of the pigments will carry on moving outwards. You can see here this obviously this paper's what because it's not meant for this kind of work but it's um, all flowing over here and it's ending up in some puddles here and that that will all uh, make and some of it will dry quite matte actually um, where it's mixed because I quite often use gesso as well and then you get these little matte places and then other places where it's nice and shiny so it's um, got those contrasts going on. So yeah, I use that one a lot and then I use this one which is an ink. So that's the Dela Rowney um, acrylic ink. And if you look again, like the Colourcraft ones, all the iridescence settles to the bottom. So give it a good shake up before you use it. And this one comes with a little dropper like all the uh, Dela Rowney inks do. And again, you can just, oh, she says it seems to have a blockage. <laughs> That's a, and this one's a gold, so you can see that's silver and this one's a gold. Somehow, 
I've got a, an airlock or something stuck in the top of there but uh, you can see what it's like so it's a little gold one so you can use that either with just the dibber or you can use a brush um, and then you can paint on top of it or you could you can see how it goes quite thinly it'd be quite nice to put over the top of another colour I'll just pick some up there you could put it you see how you could paint over the top of a colour there okay so those are the three iridescent mediums I use and I use them like I say on top wet in wet wet on dry in a variety of ways I'll just show you this um, that I've been working on at the moment I have to be careful not to tip it because it's actually still wet I did a lot of work on it yesterday left it to dry overnight and then I've put some more on today yesterday I used the um, the De La Rowney with a brush on top of the gesso so some of these areas I don't know if you can just see if it catches the light um, some of these areas around here have that gold De La Rowney one on used quite thinly and quite sparingly you can see it just catching the light here at the edges um, after that had dried and all the brush holes had sunk into the gesso and the ink um, we've got a bit of collage on here as well and some drawing underneath the gesso there um, so once that had all settled in and everything had diffused overnight as it sinks into the paper and into the, the wet medium I um, this morning have worked on it again uh, in some places I've just actually added some water to pick up some of the brush hole pigment, pigments re-wet them to spread them out a little bit more I've added a little bit of extra brush oil in places and then I've put some um, of the Windsor & Newton iridescent medium on here and here can you see and then dropped some extra brush oil into it so you'll get um, and that that will continue to move over, you know as it dries so this is a nice piece here where it's it's drying I'll do some close-up photographs of this and put them on at the end of the the video um, you know you might be interested to see that how things sort of settle overnight it's, it's no good um, drying them with a hairdryer leave them to sink into the paper and to sink into whichever medium you've used you know some of the gesso I used quite heavily and was left it quite wet so the pigments have sunk into that some of the gesso was dry and smooth uh, so they sat on the top of that so you get lots of different contrasts and effects okay so I hope that was useful to you like I said these ones a little bit more about them these are colour craft uh, you can see the price on that one, 4 49 That one is a bit more expensive, but again, there's probably actually a lot more iridescence in there because it's much thicker, so it'll probably last longer, especially if you dilute it. Uh, and I can't just think how much that one was, but it it was less than £5 anyway, so they're all similar price-wise, um, but you, you know, you get different effects. This one's a bit, a bit smoother, a bit more subtle, the De La Rowney ink, um, whereas these are quite quite bright but you know like I say do um, dissolve you know um, add water to them or whatever um, so I buy mine at my local art shop um, but you can get them online but I'm sure if you've got a good local art supplier that's probably the way to go because they can advise you as well so um, I'm lucky I have a good shop in Lancaster Studio Arts where I can get um, you know everything I need really so then they've got the full colour craft range and the Windsor and Newton so yeah um, have fun with it just have a play like I do here and you know move move them around um, add to them it's making a stripe there when it, now that I've done that just have a play um, add more colour I've just bought a new colour actually this morning so I'm just going to pop a bit of that in. I have no idea what colour what it's going to come out because it's called sandstone um, so I've really no idea until I open it what colour it it is. It looks quite brown in the pot. Um, I'll pop a bit of water on. And we'll have a see what colour this this comes out. Yeah, so it's just a, a, a nice, more of a ready brown than. Um, than the dark brown that I've got. Actually quite a lot of orange is coming out of that. It looks quite orangey and it's mixing nicely with that iridescence there moving out. See what it does with the turquoise. Yeah so that's quite a nice colour you've got especially there with the, um, the iridescence and the turquoise together. It's got orange and turquoise make quite a nice uh, contrast to each other. That's lovely there where it's swirled into it. 
don't know if you can if you can just see that but uh, yeah it's a nice colour that I'm sure I'll be using that quite a bit okay so thanks for watching I hope that's been useful if you've got any questions at all please do put them in the comment section uh, you might like to look at that tree demo that I did uh, a little bit earlier um, to see how I used the colour craft spray um, yeah have fun with it just have a little play around okay thanks for watching bye bye